everyone and welcome back to Blood Bowl and in an effort to try and make this be on the channel a bit more than once or twice a year today we're going to be trying out Blood Bowl 7s, a smaller scale way to play the game 7 players minimum, 11 players max with a few other different rules that speed up the game in general uh, each half is only 6 turns instead of 8 the pitch itself is thinner and shorter although to make up for that because obviously that would give a ridiculous advantage to models with huge movement uh, you don't actually set up against each other on the line of scrimmage you set up back from each other so you have this no man's land in the middle represented by the skull on the default pitch and that means you're basically still having to run the same number of squares to get to the end zone so it isn't an unfair advantage to like Skaven with their movement 8 or 9 or whatever so we're going to give 7s a try and see how it goes and if it's popular enough that would mean we can bring Blood Bowl to the channel more often because it is a quicker game uh, it was an absolute nightmare having to edit that last game we played, though, largely my own fault, trying to do some fancy stuff in editing, and it just didn't work. The video kept crashing, I had to render it like five or six times to get it to do anything. It was a giant pain, so hopefully we'll just try this out. Uh, the only other difference is that if you get the Dead Zone, Dead Dead Ball, whatever it's called, book, uh, it has the rules for sevens, although really, if online you can just find the sevens version of the kickoff table and injury table, and then obviously just buy the shorter pitch, um, you're good. You, you don't really need the book, because the base rules are exactly the same. So the other nice thing about playing sevens is only needing, uh, well, a minimum of seven, a maximum of eleven players, which means we can have the Bogan Half and Barons on the table sooner than you would think, because the other half of the team isn't painted yet. But the half that is means that we can field them today. You can only have a maximum of four players that are not linemen, so you have to have a minimum of three linemen, essentially, in a sevens team. And as a result of that, we have three Imperial linesmen at the front here, two of them using the same sculpt and then one using an alternative one. And then we have an ogre, they've managed to fit an ogre in, and a, what are they called, two bodyguards, and also a blitzer. I forgot to mention, but for sevens, the... The value of your team is 600,000 as opposed to a million. It's also meant to be copper pieces rather than gold, but that's just because this is meant to represent the minor leagues. So it's it's cheaper. I, I like to think that the fans are also not in the thousands, but maybe in the hundreds. But for the purposes of making a team, it's still just... The player's value is the same. So linemen are 45k for uh, Imperial Nobility, but it's not gold pieces technically. But either way, that means we can see them, the bodyguards with uh, Stand Firm and Wrestle, the Blitzer has Block and Catch, the Ogre of course has a bunch of different rules assuming he's allowed to do stuff thanks to Bonehead, and the basic linesmen have Fend so they can stop people following up when they get pushed back. And going up against the Bogenhafen Barons are the Necromatic Horror Team aka the Wolfenberg Crypt Stealers. They have a setup of three of their zombie linemen and then simply two werewolves and two flesh golems. Um, nothing left in the budget for anything else. I forgot to mention now also, but team rerolls in Games of Sevens cost double what they would normally cost. It's again to represent these guys are not skilled. Uh, they're they're trying to get into the big leagues. On that note as well, if you were playing league games of seven, you don't earn SPP. A random player can get a random skill after each match, but then there's also a chance they'll get discovered and taken to the big leagues, in which case they're just gone forever. <laughs> so you don't really want that, and uh, this is just an exhibition match to try out seven, so that part's not going to be particularly rel uh, relevant at all. Did forget to mention though, in the 600k budget, the Bogenhaven Barons did have enough room for an assistant coach and a cheerleader, they're just 20 grand each. Um, but the Wolfenberg Crypt Steelers have nothing because that is exactly 600k right there. So a mix of runners, punchers and then just zombies to take the flak really. With that we'll get set up and again you don't set up on the line of scrimmage facing each other. There's this lovely no man's land between the teams which is also a little bit different. It means the first turn will probably also be quicker which again I think speeds up the game in general. Alright we've done some of the pre-game setup just to skip having to do it on camera. Both sides have set up. The sidelines are a little bit shorter in the Sevens version of the table, only one model at most can be set up in those. You still have to have three on your starting line and the rest can kind of just be modelled around here. Um, rolled off, the Necromantic Horror team, aka Wolfenberg Crypt Sealers, are receiving the ball. The Bogenhafen Barons are kicking it, so hence they're pretty much just right up to the line there to try and push forward. So, already rolled for weather, it's perfect Blood Bowl weather, for now at least, which is very different to how it is here, where uh, in Scotland we've had a month's worth of rain in less than 24 hours. It is very dangerous out there. So the ball is being kicked 
yonder, right there, it still bounces, etc. But like I mentioned at the top of the video, there is a sevens specific kickoff table, there's a sevens specific injury table. I don't think I mentioned there's a sevens specific um, prayers to nuffle table as well. But that about covers it. So for the kickoff event, we're just going to roll, and that would be a five on 2d6, which is a high kick. An open player on the receiving team may be moved any number of squares regardless of their movement allowance and be placed in the same square the ball will land in. Mr. Werewolf here is just going to do that and we might not need to see it bounce because he's going to try and catch it on his 3+. plus. That is a 6 on these dice, isn't it? It's been a while. Yes. So Mr. Wolf over here will be starting with the ball. We'll just use that marker because it stands out more than the ball itself when the ball isn't just bouncing around the pitch. So that is how things are going to start with the Wolfenberg Crypt Steelers getting turn one of six in this half. No re-rolls, so there's probably going to be quick turnovers as well. Let's give Sevens an honest goal. So turn one for the Wolfenberg Crypt Steelers. Forgot to mention dedicated fans are beyond saying that we're going to count them in the hundreds rather than the thousands just because it's a smaller game. But um, it's, it's basically the same as in a proper game of Blood Bowl. 400 fans have shown up to cheer on the Wolfenburg Crypt Steelers and 200 have shown up to cheer on the nobility because why would you cheer on rich people? Anyway, beyond that, turn one, we're going to get started. It's going to be mostly just moving, getting in position for some bashing on the second turn because, again, you don't start in somebody's face. So we're going to move some slow linemen. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A sort of cage will form around Mr. Vampire. And the Flesh Golems also only move four. One, two, three, four. And one, two. And then that is a lovely space for a werewolf to fit in. We'll go one, two, three. Uh, let's go four, actually. Be aggressive. So the werewolves have massive movement eight, but it's the one with the ball we need to worry about. Uh, they also got to, they have claws and frenzy, so we have to worry about that as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that's good enough. And then finally, the ball carrier. Actually, he could do a blitz. Six, seven, eight. He would have to rush to get the blitz, but you know they can come to them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I think that's good enough there because they don't have anyone with enough movement to get round to attack him from the back without having to do a dodge. So that was a super quick first turn. Didn't even roll any dice. There's still only one blitz per turn. But yeah, they're, they're in a good position, I think. Turn one for the Bogenhafen Barons and they're going to do some movement with their bodyguard over here. This is a bodyguard, isn't it? Yes, movement six. One, two, three. No, three, four. Start just filling in some spaces. Down here we've got a lineman, one, two, three. And let's have this lineman, one, two. Don't want to move anyone away from the ogre just yet. This line person can go one, two, with a hair stuck to her base. There we are. I uh, haven't even felt the need really to spin players around because you only have a maximum of seven to move anyway. But I guess when, once there's a big scrum going on, we might change that, but. For now, it's kind of easy to tell who's moved and who hasn't. Obviously, these three haven't. So, let's try and do a blitz with the ogre, which means we have to pass his bonehead roll. And that rolled off camera, but it was a one. So, nope, he is away with the fairies, just looking at the plovers. So, never mind, and I think that loses the blitz as well, which is bad. So, let's just uh, one, two, and one, two, three block them a little bit that is unfortunate the ogre was going to get stuck into that zombie push himself in and be a problem turn two of the first half for the necromantic horror team and we're going to be rolling a lot more dice this turn so let's see how things work out just going to try and clear a nice little gap for the werewolf honestly because it is quite hard to catch them if they're able to slip by so we're going to do our blitz here from the flesh golem he's going to move forwards one and you know what, we will start turning people around now they're in a scrum. On to this blitzer. Nope, this is just a lineman. With one support, meaning that it's strength 5 versus strength 3. So that is two dice. And that is a push or a uh, down, attacker down. We'll just take the push and push him there. And does he have, he does have fend actually, so never mind, we'll push him there. 
because he will choose to fend him off. So that was not ideal. And that is the blitz used up. We'll have this lineman just move forward one to mark him again. So the werewolf can definitely slip round down here, but he's gonna be kind of by himself. Let's throw a blitz, uh, not a blitz, sorry, a block from this lineman into this bodyguard with the werewolf supporting. So that puts him at strength four versus strength three. Apparently these dice can only roll a push or a attacker down. Well, he will push him here, I guess. And the bodyguards have fend. No, they do not. Although they can choose to stand firm. Will he stand firm? Uh, you know what? He'll stand firm. And force him to not do anything. Basically. Fair enough. Let's move the werewolf. The werewolf with the ball. He's got eight movement. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight all the way down here and he'll go for it he'll go for one that's a six just in case you aren't aware there we go six and will he do it again though they can definitely catch him it's just how many people can catch him uh yeah he'll risk it he'll, he'll go for the second rush slash going for it and that is fine so he is how many squares away from this end zone let's move this rule book out of the way he is three away and no one really can support him. Let's move this flesh golem up one into there. And we'll have this werewolf with agility 3 plus. Yeah, we'll have him try and dodge away. So we're going to move here for one. Dodge away. 3 plus, yep. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So he's marking this lineman right here. And that is going to be their turn two. Bogan having Barons turn two and they need to stop that werewolf. The ogre can do it if he decides to not look at the flowers this turn. He can blitz from where he is. He doesn't even need support because he is strength five. But is there any backup we can give him? And the answer is not really. Because if he had a bit more backup, he could get double the strength. So he's rolling three dice to just try and guarantee kapowing him. But everyone is kind of marked. And by kind of literally because there's only seven of them so the ogre will blitz and will he bonehead twice in a row he will not so he can go one two three blitz from this angle strength five versus strength three so that is still two dice apparently these dice can only roll a push or an attacker down as well that's interesting so They'll take the push then, and go there, and follow. And that's a problem then, because the werewolf can definitely still just dodge. And that's the um, blitz used up. So, we'll have this lineman throw a block into this lineman, with no support, because she's marked. So that is just three on three. It is, so it's one die. And it's a both down, and the linemen don't have wrestle, it's the bodyguards that do. Yep, so that is a splat splat both down. Does the Imperial Linesman armor break? That's a six, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, it does. He's an eight plus. Does the Zombie Lineman armor break? Yes, yes, it does. So the injury table for sevens is different. Uh, we have it handy over here, actually. Hang on. So, let's do the injury for the Imperial Linesman first. That is a 7, which is just on the, the cusp of not being stunned, but he is stunned. So, turn him face down. Beyond that, it goes to KO. And for the Zombie, that is a 7. Well, we just covered that. They have managed to stun each other, and that is a turnover as well. So we're already at the halfway point of the first half for the Wolfenburg Crypt Stealers. So that just shows you how much quicker a, a Sevens game can flow. They're also in danger of scoring. Have to dodge a couple of times. Could also risk doing a double uh, block against the Ogre with the help of the other Werewolf. But that would not make them higher than his strength. So, the only safe move besides just trying to get the ball out of there with a couple of three pluses is to move this Werewolf where potentially the ball could bounce actually, so let's just move him in 
right there. And I think we're just going to go for it. There is blocks that could be thrown, but the block dice have not been kind so far. Let's move this flesh golem in one to help tie up some more players. And I think that's all that needs to be done except the attempt to score. So this is going to be two dodges required. One move there. And that's an immediate fail, I'm pretty sure, because it's a three plus agility. Yes, it is, with no rerolls, no uh, dodge skill. He is falling on his behind right there as he gets tripped up by the ogre. And the ball is going to bounce to the, uh, the one, which is right there. Boing right there against the edge of the pitch. And that is a turnover. Oh, no, it isn't. Totally forgot the, uh, the armor break. Let's see if the armor does indeed shatter on a werewolf with a 7. That is not good enough. They are a 9. So for the Bogan Happen Barons, all they've got is an ogre down there that wants to try and grab the ball sometimes and may also just want to stare at the flowers. Everyone else is tied up in combat. And the linemen and the blitzers and the bodyguards, they've all got strength 3. Uh, so do the werewolves for that matter. The only difference is the flesh golems and the ogres, which is also kind of easy to keep track of strength-wise. But it does mean there's no advantageous blocks to be thrown here because everyone is marked um, if he wasn't there that would be a perfect way and there's what agility 4 plus yeah that's not great either well oh actually you know what if he threw a block against the flesh golem he'd be getting supported right there but that would only make him strength 4 so it would make it even rather than uphill which is not great either uh, that's the that might be their best option. The alternative is he throws a block against that lineman first. One die. Yeah, he's going to risk that because then at least they can hopefully free up someone to go running. And if it's the blitzer, that's a good thing. So that is strength three versus strength three. So it's a one die into there from that bodyguard. And it is a kapow. So he is getting punched to the ground. He is not going to follow up because he needs to stay there to try and help out against the flesh column. Does he break the zombie's armor? Yes he does. So what does he do to the zombie? Oh, that can't be good. So that is 11, which is seriously hurt. The player misses the rest of the game, but will need more time to recuperate. In league play, the player is not available to play in the team's next game. However, zombies do have regeneration, so I'm just gonna check if that does anything different in sevens. It seems to be exactly the same, if that's wrong, apologies. Again, it has been a while since we last played, plus sevens is new. So bear with us. So on four plus, he's just placed in the reserves box until the rest of the drive. That's a six. So he's not entirely out. He will be back on when the next drive starts. But for now, he is out of there, and we can carry on as planned. Which was uh, this lineman throwing against the golem there. So it was three versus four, but with two supports, that means they're rolling two dice. So let's get this out there. Two block dice phase two of a phase however many plan so it's a both down or a push he doesn't have to or a, a, what do you call it a stumble he does not have dodge so he'll definitely take that he'll use stand firm however so he'll fall where he is does his armor break on a 10 plus i believe <laughs> it does stop rolling tens what happens to him a seven is just stunned well just stunned a flesh golem getting stunned isn't great but he is just quote unquote stunned and that frees up our blitzer here to go walkabouts with his movement 7. So now comes phase 3 of this 4 step plan. The ogre is throwing a block against this werewolf. Does bonehead kick in? No it does not. So that's strength 5 versus 3 so he's rolling 2 block dice. I put the curse is back. Well he will uh, push him there and also he should be facing this way now and he will follow him and that's it for him so the only other thing they really want to do is to move that blitzer down against the ball but now the werewolf is not on the ground which is a problem one two three no wait uh, has he declared, has there been a blitz this turn? There hasn't. You know what, he can blitz then. 
So we'll go here and we'll blitz against that werewolf. Two dice. And werewolves do have dodge, don't they? No, they don't. Well, so he's going to get splattered onto the ground. He will follow. Does the armor break on a 9 plus? Yes, yes it does. That's just a stunt. Well, again, just a stunt when they're low on numbers is a lot worse. And that's going to be their turn, I think. Is there anything else they want to actually swing at? Uh, you know, yeah, actually, there's one more block to do. This linesman can go into that linesman with... Oh, he isn't supported, so it'll just be one die, but sure. And gets him. Smack. Will not follow up. Break the armor on a seven. Not good enough. Necromantic Horror Team, turn four. This zombie linesman is getting up and moving into position here. This should have been facing forwards. So he unstunned at the end of our last turn, so he can get up this turn. He will do and do nothing else. And he was stunned and the werewolf was stunned, but not the werewolf who was originally holding the ball. There isn't much they can do. So, let's see here. With Frenzy, that's a problem. Because if he gets up to Blitz the Ogre, he'd have to do it twice, and it's twice uphill. He'd also have to do a ridiculous number of dodges to move on to the ball, then pick up the ball, then move back. Although I think that might be his only option, you know. Hmm. Sure, what's the worst that could go wrong? So he stands up for three. He's moving here for four, so we have to check dodge first, I believe, which is a three plus. Yes. And then it's a three plus to pick up the ball. On his agility. That's a six. So he did pick up the ball again. So he is holding it. Then he's going to move back here for five, which is another dodge. He did it. Six, seven, eight. I believe he has just scored. Hopefully we did enough rolls there. Let's throw in one extra and see if it would have mattered because I feel like I may have missed one. I hope I didn't miss one because if I did, then he would have failed it. I think that was done right though. He dodged in, he picked up the ball on a roll, he moved away again, and then he moved away again, right? I think that was correct. So that is the first score to the Wolfenberg Crypt Scalers. So we've set up for a new drive and it will be turn four for the Bogenhafen Barons receiving the ball from the Wolfenberg Crypt Scalers. The zombie lineman that just got put into the reserves box is back on the table, so both sides are still fielding seven. And the ball wants to land there, but we have to wait and see if that actually happens after the kickoff event. So let's just roll 2d6. That would be a 6, 7, 8, 9 on the 7s is quick snap d3 plus 1. Open players on the receiving team can immediately move one square. So d3 of the Bogan Happen Barons plus 1. So that'll just be two of them can move one square. Uh, one square, one square. Oh yeah, this is the Blitzer and the lineman that has stayed at the back there. The ball is going to bounce when it lands going to land wrong, nothing but ones on that so it actually bounced right over there and we're ready to begin play with that I think. Let's start the turn by seeing if Mr. Ogre wants to do something or look at a butterfly. He does want to do things. He's going to go one, two, three, four. Let's, let's keep in the good habits of turning players around even though for the first turn I, I really don't think it matters but let's stay in good habit. Uh, let's move this line person. One, two, three, four. And we'll move this bodyguard, one, two, three, four, five. And we'll move this bodyguard, one, we'll just move him there, actually. This lineman's going to come in a little bit to just make it harder for the werewolf to come around the side there. We want our blitzer to pick up the ball, so one, two, three, we'll call that good. And then I think that's it, besides the deadly, deadly attempt to pick up the ball. One, two to pick up the ball. Does he achieve it on a... 3 plus agility. No, he does not. Uh, they don't have a reroll, so it is just going to scatter and cause a turnover. The ball is very difficult to pick up. It's going to bounce to the 5, which is right there. Boing, boing, boing. And that's a turnover. Turn 5 for the Wolfenberg Crypt Sealers, and uh, one turn to go after this. So really, if they want to try and score again just to get 2 ahead, that werewolf's going to have to slip along the bottom there. But or the other werewolf can do it, I suppose. Let's do some miscellaneous movement first with our slow lineman. One, two, three. To just try and gum up the works. This lineman will go one, two in like that. This lineman will go in like that. 
and our flesh golems will he'll just move in one two get punched in the face by an ogre because that's what they do let's move the upper werewolf first so one two three four five six seven eight actually let's do ah, should he risk a rush it's only a one in six chance of failing what's the worst that could possibly go wrong there we go oh, one rush not gonna risk two that's that puts him in a dangerous position that's fine the other one we will have to move the camera slightly is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if he did two going for it, slash rushes, he would attempt to pick up the ball, but he'd be marked and he could get easily smacked. Um, he'll do one just to get danger close to make the ball that much harder to pick up. So he'll go there, end his turn, and then the last thing we're going to do is a blitz with the flesh golem that hasn't activated into this bodyguard here moving for one two supports that takes him to strength six six versus three it's not greater than double so it's still just two dice but that's fine and that is a both down or a push uh is that a bodyguard because the bodyguards have wrestled it is the bodyguard so in that case he will because he can just choose to knock them both prone without any effect. Might as well try and do the push, but he will choose to stand firm. So they're both just going to glare at each other, and that is turn. Second last turn of the first half for the Bogan Happen Barons, and their other bodyguard up here with his movement of six. One, two, three, four, five. I've got to turn the, uh, the Wolfenberg Crip Stealers around after that last turn, sorry. Just real quick do that, so that we don't get confused about whose turn is what. And he's into position there, to to help rather. And we're going to move this lineman back, one, two, three, four. Should be there, and then we're going to do a blitz into the werewolf here to clear him out of the way to let the blitzer make up for his former mistake. So we'll just turn him around now. <clears throat> so that is two dice. And what is with only rolling an attacker down and a push. I, mean, I guess the push is fine though. We shall push him there and we shall follow like that and that does free up the ball so the blitzer is going to move on to it for one and successfully pick it up this time because he learned from his mistakes. Yes he did. So where is the ball marker? There it is. So he moved for one which means he has five, uh, six movement left but there's not exactly a super safe place for him to go yet. So we'll move here for three, four, five, six. And then what backup can we provide him, if any? We can provide him a lineman. One, two, three, four, five. Like that, to give him a linesman. We might as well try and throw a block with the ogre into the flesh golem. And he doesn't bonehead, so that's five versus a total of, oh, also five, because he's marked. So it's only going to be one die. Oof. But that's good enough. Now he'll stand firm, so he gets smacked down there. Armor. Nope, but that's okay. So he is done. Could throw a block here, but he is massively outnumbered, so no, we'll call that good. Last turn of the first half. For the Necromantic Horror team, they just need to hurt people because the Blitzer, even with two rushes, is not going to be able to score a touchdown. There's no one who can get into a position to even receive a, a short pass, let alone a long pass. And they themselves will not be able to snatch the ball and score based on where their werewolves are. So, they're just going to try and hurt people. And I think the best bet might be to do a Blitz from all the way up here. One, two, three, four five and then it would have to dodge because it wants to go here and then that would be six and then blitz for seven uh that's unnecessary actually let's just use this well hang on first of all we'll stand up the flesh golem that got knocked over by the ogre he's not doing anything else this flesh golem is going to throw a block right here with two supports for two block dice push or a push when he has stand firm well it's not like they have rerolls to consider so he will choose to stand firm 
and then we're going to throw a block with the lineman. We're going down the line until something hurts him. Down or both down? He'll choose both down, and then it becomes whether or not the bodyguard wants to use wrestle, and he will, which means they're just both knocked down. I don't believe you roll armor when you do that with wrestle. I think it's purely you both get placed prone. Uh, we'll double check in a second, because either way that's a turnover. Well, it is the last turn of the first half, and as explained, the Bogan half and Barons, who have forgotten to be turned around, they can't make it to the end zone. There's two extra squares needed, assuming two successful going for it, so there isn't much thing to do. Uh, for Wrestle, it, it seems you just play some prone. It seems like you don't roll armor or anything like that. If that's wrong, apologies. First time for the Bogan half and Barons being on the table, and uh, their, their kind of speciality is fend and wrestle. So... They can't score, they might as well try and hurt somebody. They don't want to risk a foul necessarily though, because the losing players in sevens I feel like is disastrous. But, if the Necromantic Horror team were to lose a werewolf, that would be real bad for them. So, on that note, we're going to come over here, and we're going to move this lines person one square to get in against the werewolf there. So that would be this block here would be a three versus three with an extra support so yep there that would be two so throwing a block here and he does not have dodge so that will smack him down he will follow because they might they might follow a werewolf if they don't break his armor because they've been really really good at that so far on a nine plus nope okay it's fine uh let's see would they really risk a bodyguard by fouling a werewolf that sounds funny. Why not? We're going to move the ball carrier back so he's getting a plus two in total. And we're going to fill. One, two, three, fill. So it's just armor break with plus two. He rolls a double, the ref catches him. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. He does make it. Injury roll on the werewolf also doesn't get caught. It is just a, that's just stun, right? Um, that is, yep, that's just stun. So he's going to be back on for the next drive anyway, which is now because that is the end of the first half. So we're going into the second half with the Bogenhaven Barons trailing 1-0. So top of the second half with the Bogenhaven Barons receiving. So we're going into their turn one after the kickoff event. Let's see what it is. That's where the ball is meant to be landing. Uh, pretty much the same lineup as before, more or less. And that is going to be a 7, which is brilliant coaching. Both coaches roll a d6 and the number of assistant coaches. Uh, Bogan Half and Barons have 1. The coach with the highest gains 1 extra reroll for... Is it for the drive or the half? Uh, the drive. Okay, well, I'm sure they'll find a use for it, that's for sure. So, let's see. It's a plus 1 to the red die, but that is not going to be a 6. So, that, unfortunately for them, means that the Wolfenburg Crypt Sellers have 1 reroll as we go into... Bogan Happen Barons at turn one in the second half. So this retainer linesman person is going one, two, three, four. And then we're moving in one, two, three down here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now who are we going with first? Let's move the lines person up to there just in case we have a repeat of the disaster of last time. We'll move the ogre last because him standing there might be okay so we're gonna go with the blitzer here going one two onto the ball picking it up on a three plus managing to pick it up this time so that was three to get onto there and we'll go four five six he is done then does the ogre bonehead really don't want him to <laughs> He's just, he's just spinning. He's just spinning around, doing whatever it is ogres do when they bonehead, and that means there's just a lovely gap there to get into where the ball carrier is. Turn one for the Wolfenburg Crypt Sealers. They don't exactly have much of a cage to defeat here, so let's see what's happening. This Fletch Golem's gonna move into here just to do some marking. Uh, the Fletch Golem up here is gonna go one, two, three, four. Uh, four, would that be four, hang on, one, two, three, four, yep, it is. And then we're gonna move this werewolf. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Could have actually declared a blitz on him there. Um, although I would have had to do it twice because of Frenzy. 
we'll move the zombie linesman. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, to mark him up there. And then with our final werewolf, that is going to be the blitz, I think. And it's going to be double because of frenzy. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six to blitz. Yeah, or six to block, rather, during the blitz. So yes, we will do that. Oh, do not put two werewolves next to each other on the table. They just start fighting with each other. So with the one support, that makes it four versus three. So it's a two die. What is with these results? Attacker down or a push? The free reroll from Brilliant Coaching. Thank you, that's more like it because the Blitzer has what? Uh, block and catch. Oh no, yeah, he has catch. That's fine. And you need dodge to avoid a stumble. So he will get splatted over to here. And the werewolf will follow up. Now I'm going to have to go double check for Frenzy. Do you do the ball stuff first or do you do the secondary? Frenzy attack first, because that's going to be a problem. I'm going to go double check real quick. All right, I was totally forgetting. You don't do the follow up attack if you knock the target over. It's only if he just gets pushed back you have to follow. So he's on the ground. So first of all, let's see if any of that lovely, delicious armor breaks on a not on a set guy on a five. So does he catch the ball, or rather, where does the ball bounce? I guess because he knocked it out of his hands. Let's get rid of that for a second here. It bounced to the four, which is, where is the four? The four is actually back onto the werewolf. So does the werewolf catch it then on a, oh, he's marked, so it'd be on a four plus. Isn't it actually, isn't it a minus one as well if it's bouncing in that manner? So it's actually a five plus. So it bounces again to the one, which would be, boing, it landed. Right there amongst both teams, just to be extra messy. Bogan Half and Baron's turn two of half two, and the Blitzer is just gonna stand up for now. The, hmm, let's see, let's bring this lines person down. One, two, three, four, five, into there, and block the werewolf with your body. Then, we're going to do a blitz with the ogre, if he doesn't bonehead, he does not, so into the werewolf, one, two, into there, into that werewolf, he is getting one assist, not that it's required, it'll decide sooner or later, it's a push, well, he's getting pushed, it has to be into one of these three squares, he could actually force the ball to bounce, yeah, let's do that, so the ball is going to bounce, because the werewolf's getting pushed and the ogre is absolutely following. So the ball is going to bounce from that square. Actually, did they get a chance to, to grab it? I think it just bounces. If that's wrong, apologies. Six is going to bounce right over there, right next to him, which didn't help that much. I was hoping it would bounce down the way. Well, then the bodyguard here is going to do a block into the same werewolf, pick on that werewolf day, although hang on he's not getting a support, so it would be three on three for one die. Before that then, one, two, three, four, and then the one die block. Yep, okay, well he doesn't have any defense against that, so he's going to get smacked into the square with the ball again, except this time he's on his back. He will follow. Does the armor break? Nope. Where does the ball bounce? It bounces to the three from here, which is back onto him. But he's marked, so this is like a five or a six. Nope, so it bounces again to the eight from here, which would be onto the ogre. That, that's gotta be a flat six. Nope, it bounces again to the six from the ogre which is onto this werewolf. He's minus a billion as well, because he's getting marked by two people, so that's uh, another uh, bounce. To the eight is here. It boinged all, on all their heads and landed over there. I think, 
there's nothing much else they can do really. Uh, massively outnumbered here, outnumbered up there, yeah, they'll, they'll call that good. Getting a right scrum going down here, turn two for the Wolfenberg Crip Stealers, and they want to steal themselves a ball. The other werewolf is just going to stand up, a little awkward because how much they push over their base, uh, but he's just going to stand up to offer some tackle zones. And then this flesh golem is going to throw a block, he has an assist, not that he needs it, but that's a two dice right there, and that is a kapow to the face. And she is going to get knocked here. Now, she has Fen, so she can choose to fend him off, and she will. So he's going to stay back there. Did he break her armour on a 9+, plus? no she, he did not. But that's fine, because it freed up the zombie. And... That zombie is going to just move forward to one to provide a tackle zone on him. And the other flesh golem, not this one's activated is going to throw a block with one assist from that zombie who moved up. Two dice on him. A both down, or, oh no that's not a both down, sorry, that is another pow in the face. So it's from that direction, so unfortunately her headdress is a bit in the way, but he's getting smacked and this is a bodyguard. So oh, it's very messy down here. Where was this werewolf? That werewolf is there. So the bodyguards have stand firm actually. So he's going to choose to stay right where he is. Does his armor break on an 8? It does not. It's 9 plus for them. And that flesh golem is done. They're not getting very lucky breaking the armor, the uh, necromantic horror team. This linesman zombie into this guy with one support is two dice. Wow, just rolling all the kapows. And this is the other bodyguard who has stand firm, so he's going to choose to fall there. Six, seven, eight, nine. His armor actually does break, and his injury is. Ooh, that's a eleven again. So he's out of there. Eleven is seriously hurt. He is missing the rest of the game. Splat. No regeneration roll on a human. So he is out of there, which is disastrous for the Imperial mobility. And he's going to go one. Uh, one, two. Three, four, to come around like that. And I think the only thing they're going to try and do now is a ridiculous, stupid attempt to just pick up the ball and run. So it'd be a dodge with what, minus three? So it would be a five or a six. Oh, wait, no, he's not agility two. It would be a six. Followed by a pickup attempt with a ridiculously low chance. You know what? That's not worth it. It's, it's insane. We will, we'll, though throw a block here from this werewolf that hasn't activated yet. He's getting support from that zombie that moved in. And that's going to be a stumble against the linesman who does have Fend though. Um, does Fend counter Frenzy? Oh, it got knocked over anyway so I guess it doesn't matter. So yes, I presume it does. Does his armour break? On a 7, that is not enough and that is their turn done. Halfway through the second half for Imperial Nobility, uh, with Slash Bogan having Barons, they've got a slab of meat to try and get through and a ball to try and pick up. This linesman is just going to stand up. This lines person is just going to stand up. Uh, the bodyguard who's surrounded by death on all sides is just going to stand up. Very, very carefully. <laughs> there we go. Very carefully. Then we've got to start throwing some dice. We're going to start with seeing if the ogre can throw a block into this werewolf. Bonehead roll. He boneheads at the worst possible time. He doesn't have a tackle zone and he is Audi. Not the end of the world necessarily, but still kind of bad. Because it would be a straight strength 3 versus strength 3 if that lineman tried to get rid of the werewolf by herself to let the blitzer grab the ball and run. If the blitzer did a block onto the ball, because uh, he's not supported at all, yeah. Um, let's risk it. We'll risk the one die, this line's person, into the werewolf. Strength three, three versus strength three. There's what you want to see. The werewolf gets splatted. The line's person is going to fall up to help body block. Does the werewolf's armor break on a nine plus? 
you know, I was totally forgetting the werewolves have claws as well, so they only need to get 8 plus. I hope that hasn't came up yet. But either way, the werewolf's armor did not break. Then the uh, blitzer, 1 2, buckle his shoe, also pick up the ball. No, he fumbles the ball, it bounces to the 1, which is onto this lines person who's getting a minus 1 and rolls a 1, so that'll be a no as well then. So it bounces off of her head to the 2, which means it bounces onto this guy down here, he's marked by 2. Nope, bounces off of him as well. To the 2 again, so it bounces onto this zombie lines person who is uh, marked by one person. Definitely does not catch it either. It bounces to the 2 again and comes to a rest on the corner of the table right down there and that's the turnover. So we've reached the halfway point of the second half for the Necromantic Horror team and the Wolfenberg Crypt Sealers are primed to be able to pick up the ball just very barely visible down here at the bottom of the screen there. The Flash Golem here though is actually going to do a blitz. Oh actually, you know what, let's stand up that werewolf first. Actually no, I haven't decided what I'm doing with that werewolf yet. So we're going to do a blitz into here, into that lines person. No support, but they're strength 4 versus strength 3. Just looking for even a push would do, but a kapow is even better. They have Fen, so they're going to say, no, you're not following me, even though you send me flying. And that's fine. Does the armor break on that lines person? 6, 7, 8. That is good enough. It does break. What happens to them? An 8 is just outside of stun. That is KO'd. They are gone for the drive. But they have a 50-50 chance of waking up when a new drive starts. So, the Flesh Golem who hasn't activated yet, that didn't do the Blitz, is now going to do a block into him. He has one support, not that he needs it. A push or a push against a bodyguard. Uh, take the push, obviously. He doesn't have Fend, so the Flesh Golem is going to follow. And now comes the complicated part, because no matter which way you cut it, a werewolf ain't getting to that ball. So this zombie linesman is going to try and pick it up on a 50-50 chance. Now, is there any other movements to do first? Yes. One, two, three. Just putting that linesman there. Uh, ooh, let's see. I think the other werewolf is fine where he is. Oh wait, the ogre doesn't have a tackle zone right now, so he's only got one tackle zone to dodge. Maybe the, that werewolf should go get the ball then. I was going to have the zombie try and then do a pass over, uh, handoff rather next turn. I was going to say pass over. It's a very different thing. Um, yeah, let's try it then. So, trying to get away from just that lineman because the ogre has no tackles on this turn. He does it. So that's one, two, three, four. Pick up the ball. Nope. And no reroll. Ah, that's, that's rough. Well... He attempts to pick up the ball, he squanders his chance, and it bounces to the 5, which is diagonally off the table, so it's going to come back in in a second, but that's a turnover. So before the turnover, we need to see where it gets thrown back in. This is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's getting thrown in from this angle, 2d6 squares, 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Way back there, but it is over to the Bogenhappen Barons. So with only two turns left after this turn for them, the Bogenhappen Barons pretty much, and also there are two people down, they pretty much just need to grab the ball and try and run for their lives. So that's basically what they're going to do. Uh, between a Blitzer and a Bodyguard, they're the same agility, 3+. plus. Um, the only difference is Blitzers have plus one movement, but that would also mean hoping that the Ogre doesn't bonehead. It might be worth it. He's getting plus two support. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Block action into Flesh Golem. It does not bonehead, so the roll is happening, and it will be two dice. A push, or both down. Does he have anything against that? Uh, no, he does not. He does have Mighty Blow, but he'll take the push and push. Actually, the Flesh Golem will choose to stand firm, so nothing changes really. We're going to do it with the Bodyguard. One, two, three. Picking it up on a 3 plus agility. <laughs> well, you know, there's still hope. Not much hope, but there's still hope. It bounces to the 1. We're only 1 a lot in the bounce, so it falls there out of his hands and causes a turnover. 
All right, turn four of the second half for Wolfenburg Crypt Steelers. This flesh column is immediately going to declare a block action, moving to actually, you know what, that other werewolf's going to stand up real quick. Finally just standing him up so he's annoying people. But yeah, he's moving in here, he's doing a block there. No one else is helping out on either side, but he's strength four versus strength three. So two dice, push or a push against the bodyguard. He will take a push because he has to. He'll push him there and oh he has to stand firm I mean I guess it doesn't really matter uh, he will stand firm actually so they just butt heads that was to try and open up a path to get that werewolf through which obviously isn't going to work now um, and that's the blitz used up as well well let's move this linesman one forwards to help out here what else can we do? A dodge with the werewolf. Well, the other werewolf is still free, but he'd have to dodge, dodge. Ugh. Two, yeah, three dodges, three dodges. Because it would be marked there, so dodge, dodge, dodge. Yeah, that would be three dodges. Um, I don't like the odds of three, three pluses, but... Let's let's have this werewolf dodge away, and that is a big fail. No matter, even without the minus supplied from the extra mark, that is just immediately him falling. You know, I've been entirely forgetting that when people fall over like that, uh, you do check to try and break their armor. So that has been probably forgotten a couple of times. And his armor did break. What happened to the poor werewolf? That's just a stun. Well, just a stun. But he fell on his back and turnover. The problem remains for the Bogenhafen Barons though because they just need to run down the pitch with the ball but that requires the small feet of picking up the ball. So immediately the Blitzer is going for one and then is trying to pick it up and he did. So that is possible that he will actually get far enough down the pitch so he moved for one there. There's two, three, four, five, six. That's his full allotted movement. However in order to even be able to score he has to at least go for it once, so he's gonna. Uh, I guess we'll we'll say that's a four. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, going for it, going for it. He has to go for it again, otherwise he can't make it on his last turn. And he falls, whoop! Falls in the square. Because of course he does. And it bounces to the two, which is there and as I say I've been totally forgetting that when people fall like this they're supposed to check if their armor breaks. Apologies for that it has been a while his armor did not break but that did cause a turnover. So conversely now with only one turn left after this it is possible that the Wolfenburg Crypt Steelers can score. This werewolf is going to stand up for three, four, five, six and attempt to pick up the ball. Nothing else really matters because it's just an exhibition match so that's why we're just going straight to it. Does he pick up the ball? <laughs> he does not. He attempts to pick up the ball, it falls out of his clawed hands and bounces to the three, which is right next to him, on whatever that green thing is there. An amulet of some kind, but that's an instant turnover. All he needed to do was grab it and then run a couple of squares and the next turn he could just walk it in. So it's now the final turn for the Bogan Happen Barons. They cannot win because even if the Blitzer got up and successfully picked up the ball, he would not have enough movement left to make it to the end zone to score a touchdown. So really, no matter what they do, since this is just an exhibition match, it doesn't matter. So just out of pettiness, they're going to try and punch some flesh golems in the teeth. So Ogre is going to try and block this flesh golem. He succeeds in his bonehead roll. Two dice. And he kapows him. He'll stand firm to just get knocked down right there. Um, does his armor break on a 10 plus. Oh, it actually does. His armor breaks. Could have used Mighty Blow as well. But that means he can use it on the injury roll to make this a 10, right? Because it's either the armor break or the injury roll, so that's a 10. Which is a... Badly hurt, they miss the rest of the game, but he does have regen, so does he ignore it on a 4 plus? Yes, he does. So that would mean he's just in the reserve box, but... It's not really going to matter, because there's not going to be another drive. Beyond that then... Bodyguard throwing the block here. Getting supported, which means it's a 4 versus 4. Actually, you know what? This lady can go, because she's actually, is she marked? No, she's not. One, two, three. 
Now he's got two supports since the two dice. Into that flesh column there. Just trying to hurt him out of spite. Smacks him. He's going to stand firm again. Does his armor break on a 10 plus? Absolutely not. And then anything else out of sheer pettiness? Not really. Mm, no. Actually, I just realized if he. Because werewolves can pass, can't they? It's just flesh golems that can't. If he was to do a pass, could that zombie over there. Because they've got one turn left now. That's, that's still what would happen. Baron's basically done. One, two, three, four. Going for it, going for it. No. If, if that zombie lineman was one square forwards, a pass from a werewolf to the lineman could have made them score. But as it stands, he can't actually do it. Not quite. And the other werewolf is only one square ahead. Um. Yeah, there's nothing really that they need to do. So I think we can probably call the game there in the favour of the Wolfenburg Crypt Sealers 1-0. So that's going to do it for the first game ever of Blood Bowl 7s on the channel. And it's also been many, many, many months since the last full game of Blood Bowl. I'm pretty sure it was back. I'm not even convinced it was this year, but I think it was around about February last played. So it's obviously been a while. Totally 100% forgot a couple of armour break checks. Uh, on people falling when trying to run with the ball. It has been a while, so little things like that slip up. So hopefully it was still watchable, uh, despite any little niggling things. But it was just an exhibition game, of course, to try out this new type of game. Definitely plays a lot faster. It feels very surprisingly different with only seven aside and having that you know, five squares, six, one, two, three, four, five, six squares between your teams so you're not throwing a bunch of blocks turn one. It speeds up the start of the game. Games Workshop kind of market this as a, a good way to introduce players or, or coaches who just want to have quick games. I can see it appealing to both. So basically we'll see how this does on the channel and if it does good enough it will be a perfect way to have more Blood Bowl on the channel rather than one or two games a year like I mentioned because full games take ages to film, they take ages to edit, ages to upload. But a sevens game, not so bad. That, that seemed pretty quick to me. And it'd be a good fun way to get more teams ready to be shown, only having to paint up 7 of them, as opposed to 13, 14, 12 at a minimum, well 11 at a minimum I guess. So that would be very, a very fun way to get more bubble on the channel, so do let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, if you did though, hope you enjoyed, and see you in the future for something else. Until then, ta for now.